If you were out in space looking at Earth, you would see an amazing, beautiful sight. It looks like a spinning globe, and you can see how big the oceans are. You can see the large masses of land. That is, if you are looking at the part of the Earth where the sunlight is shining, and if there are not too many clouds. If you wanted to see the details of how Earth looks as a sphere, you would see more by looking at a globe, a model of the Earth that clearly identifies oceans and continents. Because the Earth is round, the most accurate map of it is a globe, a round map of our planet. Let's look at Earth and how we can map it. The large pieces of land, called continents, and the large bodies of water, called oceans. While our Earth is round, it is sometimes easier to look at flat maps. Hi, I'm Mr. Breitsbrecker, Library Media Specialist. Let me show you what I mean. Being an astronaut must be exciting. Astronauts see the Earth from space. It looks like a round, rotating ball. The rest of us can see videos of this, but if we want to see details on Earth, we will see things more clearly looking at a globe, a small model of the Earth that shows our planet in 3D, like a sphere, like astronauts see it. But from space, astronauts cannot see everything we might want to see. To be useful, we need to see details, details not visible from space. Globes are round maps. We can also make flat maps. We can make a flat map of our round planet, or a flat version of a globe. Our maps can use different colors to help us see things on land. Usually, when a map shows water, it is shown as blue. Here we are looking at a map, a flat version of the globe. It almost looks like we have unwrapped the sphere and are now looking at it flat. When we look at the Earth from space, we cannot see it all. We only see the side facing us. We cannot see everything on a globe without turning it either. In this view, a flat map of the globe, we can see everything on Earth. This map clearly identifies and shows us continents and oceans. The equator divides our globe into two halves, a top and a bottom, into the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. The length of the Earth's equator is about 40,070 kilometers around. Imagine we have drawn grids on the Earth. You will see these printed on globes. You will see these printed on many maps. The horizontal lines, the lines that go across, are called latitude. The vertical lines, the lines that go up and down, are called longitude. This grid helps us identify places on our globe or map. The lines of latitude run across, horizontal, just like the equator. We call the equator zero, zero degrees latitude. We have more horizontal lines going all the way up to the North Pole and down to the South Pole. These lines are also measured in degrees, numbers just like we measure angles. The North Pole is latitude 90 degrees. It's above the equator. The South Pole is latitude 90 degrees down from the equator. The lines in our grid that run north-south, their vertical, are called longitude. These are a set of lines that make up a grid all the way around the Earth. The Earth is a circle. A circle is also measured in degrees. There are 360 degrees in a circle. There are 360 degrees in our up and down lines, too. Longitudinal lines are measured from 0 to 360 degrees. Just like the equator is a special latitude line numbered 0, there is a north-south line, a longitudinal line, that is numbered 0. This is the north-south line that passes through Greenwich, England. It is numbered 0 degrees longitude and has a special name, Prime Meridian. When we look at a globe or a flat map of the Earth, the first thing we probably notice is that there are seven continents and they are separated by five oceans. When we look at the continents, we see North America is where the United States of America, Canada, Greenland, Mexico, and the countries off the tip of Florida and just below Mexico are. Famous places in North America include Mount McKinley, the highest mountain on the continent, the Panama Canal, and the Mississippi River the largest river on the continent. South America is where Brazil, Argentina, Bolivia, Paraguay, and other countries along the coasts 
next to those countries are. Famous places in South America include Angel Falls, the highest waterfall in the world, the Andes, high snow-covered mountains, and the Great Amazon River. Europe is where countries across from America on the Atlantic Ocean are. Europe contains many countries and stretches from Ireland and Portugal to Kazakhstan and the western half of Russia. The largest church in Russia is on the European side, St. Basil's. Ireland has more than 100 volcanoes and the most famous structure in France, part of Europe, is the Eiffel Tower. Africa is below Europe on the globe. There are many countries there including Algeria, Libya, Sudan, Ethiopia, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Egypt. In the southern parts of Africa, there are gold mines and diamond mines. The Great Pyramids were built on this continent in Egypt thousands of years ago, and lions live on Africa's grasslands. Asia contains the eastern half of Russia, China, the Middle East, India, and many more countries. Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world, is in Asia. China has a great wall that was built more than 3,000 years ago. Most of the world's major religions began in Asia. Jerusalem is the religious center for Jews, Christians, and Muslims. Australia is often called the Down Under. It lies entirely in the Southern Hemisphere. This continent is made up of the country of Australia and the island of Tasmania. We have probably all seen pictures of kangaroos from Australia and how they carry their babies in their mother's pouches. The Tasmanian Devil is a real animal too and it also carries its babies in a pouch. The largest coral reef in the world, the Great Barrier Reef, is part of the Australian continent. Antarctica is the fifth largest continent. There are no countries on this continent. No people live on this continent. Groups of scientists come for periods of time to study this frigid land. Many countries operate science stations in Antarctica, but no nation owns the land. The Earth is mostly covered with water. The large bodies of salt water are called oceans. When you see pictures of huge waves, you are seeing an ocean. There are five oceans, the largest of all of Earth's oceans. The Pacific Ocean covers twice as much space as any other ocean and more space than all the continents put together. The Pacific Ocean is notorious for bad weather. Some of the most powerful storms are brewed within its water. The Atlantic Ocean stretches from the Arctic Ocean downward to the shores of Antarctica. This makes it the same size north to south as the Pacific Ocean. However, from east to west, the Atlantic Ocean is only about half as wide as the Pacific Ocean. The Arctic Ocean is both much smaller than the other oceans, as well as more shallow. This ocean is connected to the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans via small gaps between continents. This ocean is also much colder than the other oceans, with much of the water covered in a frozen ice cap. The Indian Ocean lies between Africa on the west, Australia on the east, Asia on the north, and Antarctica on the south. 90% of this ocean lies to the south of the equator. So there you have it. We can't all look at the world from outer space, but we can all look at the details of our planet. It's a lot of fun to learn about different parts of the world. When we look at a model of the Earth, a map that is shaped like a sphere, it is called a globe. Globes always show us the most accurate view of the Earth because the real Earth is also round. Sometimes it is easier to see the details of the Earth using a flat map a two-dimensional representation of the Earth. We have looked at both today. I hope you had fun seeing how we get started using maps.